what is up so we back um uh, first of all we got 400 subscribers thank you guys so much i love all of you i appreciate it so much i also want to talk about the lack of content here recently i have just started flight school you know i'm trying to fly planes become an airline pilot that's the goal some you know some real life stuff but yeah so videos might be a little slower i'm gonna try to start putting them out more regularly again though so i do apologize for that but got a patch review um we'll go over the custom stuff don't worry you know me i am a static pack professional auto pets player so i want to start here um i also want to thank the team wood devs it kind of appears that they listened to what i said about the changes in my video they kind of met me halfway which i'm very happy about for those who don't know they were going to change ladybug which they went through with and all i said about that is this is actually a buff to ladybug because they took one hp from ladybug gave him one attack and changed him to friendly gain perk which means ladybug gets his attack buff when he gets a perk did not used to be that way and you know with things like Tropfish and Pangolin, it's very easily to have a very HP stacked Ladybug. But now, with the him getting the perk, he gets the attack. That means when you put a Garlic on your Ladybug, you get Tempo. Or if you have a Tar in front of your Ladybug, you're getting Tempo on his attack. I think this is just a Ladybug buff. Um, it's a slight nerf to winning turn 1 sometimes, though. So, I don't know. He's like better if you find the Ladybugs and you didn't find the beetle, he's worse if you find the ladybugs and found the beetle. Um, but I, I think overall is a buff to ladybug. Um, another thing the devs are going to do, they were going to remove T-Rex and add Poodle, and I was very vocal about not wanting that to happen. The pack 2 has an abundance of wide scalers and only 3 options on tall scalers. So they kind of met me halfway, and they nerfed T-Rex to start of turn, kept them the same though, and they did not remove him for poodle which i think this is a good idea um t-rex is definitely weaker and i think he is was already kind of the weaker of the three good scalers on tier six i think dragon outshined him and lec outshined him but that's mainly because they have support units and t-rex when you don't have any of the support units for lec or um dragon when you don't have like goat um i, I think that kind of makes TRX better. I think this is more of a, an arena problem. I don't know. I don't really play arena. But I, I think this is a good little meet in the middle situation with TRX. I'm happy with it. Um, Flying Squirrel got his attack back. A big fan of that. Another thing I was suggesting is I want an Axolotl to buff himself. He now, he now does buff himself. So, same thing with Ladybug. If Axolotl gets a perk, he gives himself permanent stats. That's really good. Overall, um... I think good good changes for pack two. I think overall more buffs. Um the only real nerf is uh I mean I don't think this ladybug is a nerf. It kinda of, maybe it's a nerf on turn one sometimes. Um T Rex is definitely nerfed. But with the flying squirrel is back. He's no longer um the worst tier up <laughs> in the pack now. Uh he's probably a good tier up, especially with the ferret start. So yeah, Flying Squirrel's back. Axolotl's just better now. I think Axolotl was already good. People just didn't realize it. What other pack 2 changes we got here? I'm starting with the pack 2 stuff because that's what I'm most qualified on. A Dragon got a base stat nerf. Don't think it affects pack 2. It probably does affect pack 1. Because a lot of pack 1 gamers like to just eat the Dragon with the Whale. And now your base stats on a Dragon with a level 2 Whale are going... They used to be like a 12-16. Now he's a 6-16, which is that's a pretty big difference. Um, I think that's it for pack two. Alright, let's go to the top here. A cat. I think some of these are just wording changes. I don't think cat's any different. I think it's just a word change. Um Oh, Wombat's before attack, not start a battle. It's a custom change. Um, yeah, that's different. Um, I guess, I don't know how it'll, how this affects Wombat, really. I, I mean, it, you could kind of narrow down which feint you get, I guess. could be It could be better, could be worse sometimes. 
Tapir, I think, used to be base stats on the units. And now he's a 10, 10, 20, 20, 30, 30, which is, I think, just a buff. I mean, most base stats aren't 10, 10. It's like a nerf if your Tapir's copying a behemoth, I guess. Uh, we talked about Ladybug. Talked about Flying Squirrel, blah, blah. Um, Atlantic Puffin, I don't think... I think the only thing different about this is Friendly. The same change that Axolotl and Ladybug got, which means he will remove his own Strawberry and shoot somebody with it. Um, Bass. Double and Battle. I think that's different. I'm pretty sure it did not used to be Double and Battle. Can't see what else would be different here. Dumbo Octo on three rolls. That's pretty nice. I've had a lot of Dumbo Octo games where I'm one gold off. I think that's a good change. A Cardinal. Gain and stock one copy. Nearest perk ahead. Discounted by one. Oh, gain. He he did not used to gain the copy. Um, I think that's fine. Uh, Cassowary also got the friendly treatment. When he gets a strawberry, he gets the stats. Fairy Armadillo. I don't know what's different about this. Maybe his health. I think the health is the same. This could just be a wording change. Maybe this part got nerfed. Maybe this used to be take three less. I'm not really sure. Siamese no longer eats the perk. That's pretty good. Uh, so you can have your perk and use it too. It's pretty nice. Uh, Sparrow, instead of being like a melon, it's more like a lemon now, which I think is good. That's going to help deal with snake and stuff. I, I think Lemon is kind of just better than Melon, to be honest, in a lot of situations. At least against Pack 1. Uh, you know, against Snipes, Lemon is often better than Melon. Um, Ibex, this change I didn't know about, but it's very nice. Big quality of life. Only works on one enemy per battle. When you had a level 2 Ibex and you hit a giant unit twice and you kind of wasted your Ibex buffs on it, or your I Ibex uh, triggers on it, it felt terrible. So this is a good change. Mimic Octo went from, I don't remember if he was four or three rolls. Either way, he's down to two rolls. It's a lot easier to get your uh, levels in your Mimic Octo now. It's pretty good. Ostrich looks like he got a base stat buff. Oh, and he, he, it's, it's not tier six if four shot pets are the same tier. So yeah, that's just a little easier to do. You know, what you roll whatever you have the most copies of in the shop tier-wise. He frees those. That's pretty good. Also, base stats better. I think his base stats used to be super lopsided. Oh, real Velociraptor, base stat buff. I think he's just the same. Other than base stats buffed. Pretty good. Um, Stegosaurus. I don't know what's different about this. Maybe it was just a wording change. Emu, maybe the health's different now. Could also just be a wording change. Yeah, I'm not sure what's different about Emu. He seems functionally the same. Oh, Bunyip, this is kind of important difference. He's no longer good to buff. He's better on early turns because he's set, he's set health now. It's not the same as gain health. So, like, if you have rolled twice and he's level 2... You're going to get a 4 health Bunyip. But if he had 50 health, he's going to be 4 health now. You know, you can't you can't buff him really. It's good early, definitely worse late. He was one of the better buff targets in pack 5, so that kind of sucks. Uh, Ouroboros max rolls to 5 now. I think this unit's still good. It's just its cap is a little bit lower. It's that Basically, its cap is 6-6 six, six lower at the high end. Which, that def definitely does make a difference. Especially with the pack 2 matchup, it's a lot easier to uh, actually get your board scaled higher than the Ouroboros can scale the board now. Abomination. I don't know what's different about this, so I'll assume it's just a wording change. Ooh, Kraken. He, they kept the, the nerf to his ability, but he's back to start a battle. I love to see that. That's pretty good. That's really good, to be honest. I think they also buffed him to a 4-7, which I kind of don't like. I liked him being um, a 3-7, I think that's what he used to be. 
That way you could get his attack to one with one drink me liquid. That way it'd be easier to counter Armadillo. But overall still good. I'm very happy to see him back on start of battle. Uh, Kitsune, it looks like they reverted Kitsune. He used to be... This is what he used to be. And for a time he was transfer all unusable mana. But I think he's just reverted. Um, I'm pretty sure Salmon is just a wording change. Yeah, I'm pretty certain. A Serpent's definitely different. Um, The pet's mana damage hits the most healthy enemy and one extra enemy. So basically he's not spending his mana. He's, he's also doing way less damage than he used to. But he gets an extra target, so it kind of works itself out. So if you have 12 mana on a Serpent... He dies. He's no longer going to deal 24 damage to one guy. He's instead going to do uh, 12 damage to the highest health enemy and then 12 damage to a random enemy. Um, it's kind of a buff and a nerf. It's pretty situational. Pandora's box just has level upgrades now. So if you have a level 2 dog, it gets double effects or triple effects. Um, I don't know how much this really matters. It's more just a be consistent with leveling up toys, I think. Cotton Candy is a tier 5 now. That's what's different, I believe. I used to think it was tier 4 before. Um, I wonder what they got for compensation on that. I'll have to look in a second. Uh, yeah, Dragon base stats. Poodle got one attack. Woo wee, no one cares. Uh, Pillbug got an extra HP. That's good. Koala got an extra attack, that's good. Tuna got an extra 2 attack, that's good. Swordfish got an extra 2 health, that's really good. That means the turn you buy him, he doesn't kill himself, that's pretty solid. A lion moved to tier 6, makes his ability easier to use. If you don't know, if he's the highest tier pet on your team, he gets 50% of his attack and health. So that just makes lion easier to use. Um... Also means you can have the Lion Doberman team and just like tier fives. That's pretty good. Um, the base stat change on the small one. Fig definitely nerfed. This is now before attack. It is not um, start a battle. That's this definitely a nerf. That means you kind of have to position Fig. Um, Onion. I think it's just a wording change. Tomato gets a 2 damage buff. It used to be like Croc. Now it's 10 damage instead of 8. It's pretty good. Alright, now we'll look at the uh, custom pets. Let's see. Um, my pronunciation might be bad on some of these, but Budgie. Start a turn, replace his own perk with Popcorn and get plus 1 health. That's okay, I guess. He has to have a perk for it to work, though. Farmer Mouse. Feed one corner of the cob to the nearest friend behind. Corner of the cob is give one pet or give one stat to their lowest stats. Kind of like how porridge works, but with only one. Um, Weevil, friendly eight food. Give them one attack until next turn. Works three times per turn. Um, okay, it's, yeah, it's like tempo, I guess. Albino Squirrel, replace shop food with three random foods and discount them by one gold. That's kind of wild. This is a kind of guy like you could maybe get him to level three and sell him on turn 11 and hope you get like free melons and free steaks or something. Pretty interesting. Dung Beetle, deal two damage to the, la or the least healthy enemy for each food this is eaten this turn. Um, It's okay. That's pretty good for a tier one. Oh, that's a tier two. This is also a tier 2. Okay, this is where tier 2s begin. That's okay. Farmer's Chicken. It's a tier 2. In turn, spend 1 gold to feed 1 corner of the cob to the nearest friend ahead. Um, I guess this is like good with Rabbit and stuff. That, oh, another change we should talk about. A little pseudo buff to Rabbit. Um, change perks to also trigger food eaten abilities when gained. So that means when you pill uh, in front of your ox and he you gets a melon, if you have a Rabbit on board... He's getting the stats. When you buy a scorpion, uh, it's getting stats from the rabbit. A bunch of it's basically just a pseudo buff to rabbit. Just not even a pseudo buff. It's just a buff to rabbit. Um, let's see, mink start a battle. Gain any random perk from the previous tier. 
the perk goes up with effects. It's kind of good. Um, I wonder if it's only perks in your packs. Oh no, it says gain any, so that might be it. That might mean from any pack. Maybe that. Let's see how they worded Dumbo. See, Dumbo has got emphasis on other packs, but that's. I guess that is different because Dumbo will never spawn something from its own pack. I'm not sure. I'd have to test this, but I imagine it's just any perk. Um, Vervet? Don't know what this animal is. Summon level one microwave. Oh, a new toy. Start a battle, give popcorn perk to the frontmost perkless friend. That's pretty good. That's alright, I guess. A farmer's pig, feed adjacent friends, corn on the cob. Yeah, we talked about this. This is just like a lot of food synergy added. Pony, knockout, feed the backmost friend one apple, up to three apples. That can go crazy. You're just giving stats to the back guy. A quail chick, transform and give the frontmost friend two, two, doubled in battle. When he eats food. What does it transform it to? Oh, to a quail. Transform to give the frontmost friend two, two, health double in battle. Okay, that's interesting, I guess. A Quetzalcoatlus, faint, give the pet that knocked this out and its friends one, one. So you can kind of have this guy in the back. He's got really good base stats for a tier three. Interestingly, you can cho chocolate cake this guy, and then you just have, like, a mammoth. So that's pretty cool. It's an interesting pet. Um, Sarcastic Fringe Head. Now, wh wh what are we doing, Team One? I mean, we got the farmer thing I kind of get. Now, is this... I, maybe, I, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, I, maybe this animal is actually called a Sarcastic Fringe Head. But I, I don't see why he's not just called a Fringe Head. Please correct me if I'm wrong. He could just be called a French head. But why has he got to be sarcastic? Um, either way, he summons one, 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 level one copy of the back most friend up front for the enemy. Um, I guess you, you can just give your enemy something bad. A sugar glider. Start a turn, stock one free cupcake. The cupcake goes up on effectiveness. That's okay. It's kind of weird. So you, you're kind of just getting like 3-3 three, three base stats. You get to choose where they go. But if you have Rabbit or something, you're buffing a unit while you're getting them. Doesn't seem bad. Um, what? A, speaking of names, what is this? Andrew Sarchus? Sarchez? I don't know. This isn't a, this isn't a real animal, right? It, it can't be. I don't I play Dungeons and Dragons. I don't think I've recognized this creature from that either, but maybe I'm wrong. It looks like a knoll or something. I don't know what he is. Uh, in turn, remove the shop pets below and gain 50% of its health and attack until next turn. Okay, it just eats the base steps of shop pets. That's interesting, I guess. Um, Kaku, Kuka, Kaku. Enemy faint summon one one bad chick up front for the enemy. For the enemy early, and summon up to two per battle. But this has no ability. Okay, I guess. I I guess you can mess up for the enemy early. Does this mean you can like make them over summon or something? Makes them like knock out things or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, farmer cat feed friends one corn of the cob. That seems pretty good. Uh, what what the hell is this? Gelada, gelada, gelada. I'm hold on. We're looking this up. Is this the name of this actual animal, or is this just a name? I I'm about to find out. Gelada. Okay, it is the actual name of the the primate. You you're safe on this one, Teamwood. Uh, locust faint summon one three three plain locust for each food eaten this turn. I guess this can just go off with foods. What? It's not showing me what the plain locust is. I imagine it's just a different kind of locust, so it can't go infinite. Um, trout friend sold if it was sold for at least three gold, gain one. Attack and two health. 
Well, that's some interesting combos with like rice and magic beans. Or if you're just selling a level three, I guess. Um, Blue Jay faint give three random friends one one for each food this is eaten this turn. A lot of food synergies added in customs. Farmer Crow feed three corner cobs to the nearest friend behind. Okay, that's just kind of like isolated stats. It's really just giving like two one or one two depending on what its stats were. Okay, it's like a monkey, I guess. Oh, but it gets more targets. Yeah, that's pretty good. A uh, flounder eats two foods, transform, and give the two backmost friends one experience. That's pretty good. Transformed. Okay, yeah, that's just its ability. Yeah, that seems pretty solid. Um, Tarantula Hawk. Remove one health from all enemies for every 10 attack this has. Okay, that's interesting, I guess. It's got crazy base stats at 10 2. Venus Flytrap. I, I love these plants. Super cool. They're in the game now. Sell. Choose one remaining pet from the last battle to stock it to gold. That's super cool. So, one remaining pet. How does that work? So, if you won the battle, do you get one of your own pets? Or then if they won the battle, you get one of their pets? If that's how that works, that's super sick. That's pretty interesting. Uh, Black Bear, Faint, remove four health from one random enemy for each food this is eaten this turn. It's a weird tier six skunk. I don't, this doesn't seem good at first glance, but I'm sure there's, with all these food synergy, there's probably, this thing could be insane. A uh, chimpanzee, friend ate corn on the cob, give him one one. Okay, so he just makes all these corn on the cob guys way better. Coconut crab, eats three foods, gain coconut. Coconut that works twice, coconut that works thrice. Okay, this guy seems like a really good buff target. Especially if you have like a farmer's crow in front of them. Um, Eagle Owl Faint give one or give three random friends one one for each battle this is fought. Seems bad for a tier six. I mean, he's got to you got to hope you tear up into him early and have a lot of life. He just seems like a kind of like a warthog that you can't get as much value from. A uh, farmer dog. In turn, feed one corn and a cob to all friends. That seems good. Uh, Lamprey. What is this? Lamprey? Friend faints deal one damage to the nearest friend ahead. Okay, so it's kind of, you can kind of do like summon builds with hurt pets. That's interesting. Oh yeah, these pets are cool. The Maltese and the Namazu, I believe. Namazu? Basically, they're converters. This guy spins trumpets to give mana. This guy spins mana to get trumpets. That's pretty cool. Um, Pygmy Seahorse, start a battle, give three friends 1-1 one, one health, and remove this. So he just blinks out of existence and gives stats to everybody. That seems okay early game. He's a tier 1 after all. Uh, oh yeah, something to note. Notice how all these guys said free. These don't say free. I think you have to have the SAP Plus membership to get access to these. That or it's like a maybe there's a one-time purchase for custom packs. I'm not exactly sure. But somehow you got to pay money for the guys who don't say free. A silverfish. Sell for two gold this turn. But lose it the next turn. That's kind of cool. There's some interesting things you can do with this. Because there are times where you want gold now and you don't need it next turn. So that's pretty cool. Um, Umbrella Bird, in turn make the nearest friend ahead dazed. All I know about this pet is it does not work on Whale Shark. And that's sad. But I don't know. There's probably some crazy stuff you can do with this. Maybe it'll be good with this guy, the Quetzalcoatlus. Uh, I'm sure there's some cool stuff you can do with it. Like I said, I'm not really a customs player, so I don't have like a bunch of ideas that come to mind. A fruit fly, tier 2, start a battle, give blueberry perk to the opposite enemy, and deal 2 damage to it. That's kind of cool. I, I like an opposite enemy ability. I originally wanted hair to be like that, so that's super cool. A pink ramen, faint, activate in turn on one random tier 2 or lower friend. 
Huh. I'm sure there's some crazy stuff you can do with this. But I don't know. Uh. Dimetrodon? Dimetrodon? Dimetrodon. One of those. Uh, start a battle, summon 155 if able. Otherwise, give friends 1 1. I, this is a cool ability. I like a four squad pet that has options. Like he's still good on a five squad. It makes his ability a little different. I think that's super cool. Uh, great Potu, Putu. Anyone hurt? If nobody has gained a attack, or if nobody has attacked, gain two health until next turn. Okay, so that's just like with woodpecker and things. That's interesting. I don't know how you get use out of it. Queen B, be summoned, give it 3-3, three, three, and remove all other Queen Bs. So this is cool because it balances out, uh, like, you can't just have a board of Queen Bs that all have honey and BOP. And it's also thematic, you know? Bs only have one Queen. If there's two Queens, they gotta duke it out, and there's gonna be one Queen left. That's pretty cool. Goblin Shark. God, Goblin Sharks are so cool. Start a battle, swallow the first enemy with six health or less, release it on faint. That's pretty cool. I used this um, in a random lobby we played today against somebody who had a caterpillar. So this was pretty sick. It's just a sick caterpillar counter. Um, leafy Sea Dragon, start a battle, give adjacent friends one experience, and remove this. Okay, it's just kind of like the other guy except he gives XP. This could be really good on certain boards, I imagine. Spider Crab, friend attacks, give it four health and move it far back. Works on one friend per turn. Okay, it's kind of like the opposite of the, what's his name? The Emu. Interesting. Tardigrade, summon 133 level 1 Tardigrade and make it dazed. So if you have a way to get rid of its dazed via like Unicorn or Sea Gold, you can just have, you know, almost infinite Tardigrades. That's pretty cool. Um, Rama Chicken? Rama Chicken? Faint. Give three friends that dealt damage this battle permanent 1-1. One, one. Oh, that's... How are you gonna get... I guess this is, like, for scaling snipers. Or units that got... Sni no. It, yeah, it's just for scaling sniping units. That's interesting. A jackal, pet flung, set, attack, and health to 13. So this is cool. This is super cool. This is like, you know, if you have an oversized board, like, say you have a macaque or a orchid mantis, and you have a five squad, the unit's going to get flung. Wait a minute. This is permanent, right? So, like, what if I had an owl in my board? Like, say I, he's a tier five, so I can get this guy as early as turn seven. What if I five squad with an owl? Does he just go up to 13-13? That's kind of nuts. Huh. Oh, I'm going to butcher this one. Armagosaurus? That might, maybe I said that correct first try and I butchered a lot of other ones. Who knows? Friend hurt. Restore its health. Can restore up to 15 health per turn. That's a healer. That's super cool. I, I like this idea of a pet a lot. A uh, yellow boxfish, faint set attack and health of the most friendly pet from any team to 20. So it's just, if somebody's got like, they all end on one pet, they have a 50-50, this guy can deal with it. That's kind of cool. Um, microwave oven, we talked about this already. Um, asparagus, just a tier one weaker rice. Uh, churro, activate ability before other pets with the same trigger. Ooh, that's good. So you no longer... If they, if you need attack order on your side, you don't have to get a bunch of attack. You can just use this. That's super cool. That That's actually kind of wild. I'm sure this could matter a lot in 1v1s. Um, Radish, start a battle, gain any random perk from the pet's tier. From the pet's tier is kind of wild. I don't know if this is good or not, but it's interesting. Um, Brussels sprouts. Blocks being pushed or five damage once. That's a good counter to eggplant. Uh, I like that. Um, oyster mushroom. Transform the nearest friend ahead. This at level one. 
Huh, so you could just like transform your gecko into an octo or something. That's interesting. Uh, tofu stock one two gold copy of the last non tofu food bought this turn. So you're paying five gold for the perk. But I guess you're getting like, you know, you could guarantee it's a melon. You're paying the two extra gold to guarantee it's a premium perk. Not bad, I suppose. Yeah, so we're done with that. Um I'll show you real quick how customs work. I made a little custom pack for this. I just made custom pack two. So here's how it works. There is wild and not wild. And um easy way to show you the difference. I'm on wild. Not on wild, wild. And all this does is see how you have all these pet categories. You got summons, hurts, foods, go goes on. You can't have more than two of that same type in the same tier. So I can't be a guy who comes on the customs and just like, okay, I'm going to pick every summon pet and have only summon teams. It, so and you can still do that. But if you do that, you're going to fight other people who are doing something similar to you who are all in on one strategy. This means your custom pack is kind of diverse. This also might mean custom packs can have a place in competitive now. Um, there's been some debate in the SAP community about it. We will see. But yeah, I made this little... I don't know if this pack's good or not. I just made pack two. And uh, there are some differences, some I chose. Interestingly, you know, pack two doesn't exactly fit to this. I've noticed a lot of the pets do almost fit into it perfectly, or a lot of the packs, but with some, like, slight differences. For example, if I tried to do all pack twos... Well, not here. Where is it? I don't want to lose the guys I had. Yeah, on tier five, right? You run into a problem here. See, I want all the pets that are normally in the pack. It's wild because there are three perk pets on this tier. So you, you got to lose Snapping or Axolotl because I ain't losing Panther. But yeah. Oh, another change. Three foods on tier one. Which that will also be applied to weeklies now. So yeah, a very interesting pack, or a very interesting patch. It's going to make the game, I imagine for custom players, this is super good news. And maybe customs will have a good place in competitive right now. They've largely been ignored. But I think definitely overall, good changes for the game. I'm very happy Team Wood kind of listened to my suggestions on pack 2. So I'm overall pretty happy with this patch. I think everybody's really going to enjoy it. But yeah, if you liked the video, like the video, maybe subscribe. Have a good one, everybody.